everybody, welcome back to Is It Better Call Kino Kino Kino? That's right, we're here for episodes 9 and 10 of the final season of Better Call Saul. We could not make it last week, but boy howdy do we have two, uh, I'd say two very different and yet very much, uh, peak episodes of Better Call Saul. I am Simeon Slippin' Jimmy, joined as always by Heartsy Protsy. Hello, hello. I am glad to have made it. We've got Erich McCoy. Here I am. And that's They're it. No, nobody else showed up. It's just us three, so everybody <laughs> can breathe a sigh of relief. We're all safe. Thank oh, God. I'm glad Kino isn't here. Imagine that guy. Yeah, he would have ruined it with his negative Nancy attitude. Um, yeah. Guys... The fans have been waiting two weeks now for us to talk about this, so let's just address the elephant in the room. Perhaps the, the new greatest scene in the history of Breaking Bad has been shown before us. Uh, of course, I'm talking about Gus flirting with the gay waiter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> People are dying to know our thoughts on this great scene. I've seen it twice now, and man, it, it just keeps getting better and better. And my, I keep getting hornier and hornier watching it. I can feel the sexual tension between these two men. I think it might be the single most important scene in the universe of this uh, of this series. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm so glad that you guys can appreciate this amazing scene. I thought for sure you guys would be bored by it. That's great. Uh, wh why would you assume somebody would be bored by this? You thought the scene had maybe some undertones of being boring Florian is that what you're trying to say oh no no I of course greatly appreciate very expensive wines mm. well yes. hey the reason why we didn't do an episode last week is because E. Rich could not make it so I wanted us to wait because I'm dying to hear his analysis so E. Rich please tell us about how Kino this Gus scene was it was pretty good <laughs> Yeah, it was boring, all right? You got me. <laughs> wow. It was fine. Why Why is this the thing that we're picking on? <laughs> I wanted to talk about my favorite scene, and, and nobody seems to have anything to say about it. Almost like it lacked substance and wasted time. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, <laughs> hmm. I, I yeah. said while um, I said this to a uh, monkey while, we, uh, while, while I was watching it, because he was also watching live, I believe. Um, I said that... I liked half of this episode, and the other half I was indifferent to, and that was the Gus half, like, all the Gus scenes. I didn't care for it, but I also didn't dislike it. I thought you were the Gus defender here. Oh, no, I do like Gus a lot, but, like, I think he kind of... Uh, I was indifferent to his scenes in this episode, because, like, he doesn't really have that much more to do. I think they already did this better in the subplot in one of the uh, lesser seasons when Mike was like dating some old black woman at church. <laughs> you guys remember that in this show? I remember that. I remember like, that. Th that's a better version of this. Like he he has to be mature and say, no, I'm in the game. I can't have a love life. I'm not going to, you know, that's the mistake that Saul ultimately makes is that he brings his, you know, love life into the game. That's a mistake that Walt makes. Okay. I'm going to do some analysis, quote unquote. OK, here. I think it's a perfectly great scene because I think from the like the season of TV that we just watched him going up against Lalo and winning should be his like peak should be his like he is on top of the world. He has escaped the uh, Salamanca uh, tricksters trying to get at him. And he is like. I mean, he'll, he'll definitely ascend even more, but within what the show is going to do for him, he's come as far as he possibly can and won the day. He is unable to celebrate that in the way that uh, you'd think a lot of those people would. I don't mean gay people. I mean, cartel people. Well, there are um, there are a, a few different interpretations of the scene, um, mm -hmm. one of which is Gus gets fucking rejected by Chad. Like, Gus oh, says... shit! Gus is like, hey, yeah, you know that super expensive bottle of wine you were telling me about? I went and bought it, and I have it at home. If only I had somebody to come drink it with me. And the guy's like, oh, yeah, let me know how it is. <laughs> and I was <laughs> like, oh, fuck. Maybe Gus just got turned the fuck down. Wow. Oh, man. Could that be. That was not my read of it, but that, that would be a fucking sad as fuck read. Well, that's ridiculous. Clearly, the the waiter just just knew that he was just 
just Gus was out of his reach, you know. That's and all. I think Gus was flirting hardcore, and the guy really was not. He was not going for it. I it think he was, he was being here. professional. Wow, this episode is just full of heartbreaks, huh? Yeah, was I the mean, guy, was uh, the guy a random guy, or did he work for the restaurant? He was a waiter. He was a waiter. Okay, all right. Well, you know, waiters uh, flirt with you. Quite yeah, he, he needs that tip, and Gus leaves him like yeah. a four hundred dollar tip or something. So, <laughs> you know, it worked. Amazing. Uh, I think Gus was looking for a different kind of tip, if you know. Oh, what? Whoa, bro. <laughs> hey, should we talk about the Kim stuff? You know, the real meat of the episode. Kim decides the guilt is too much. She's not a good person. No more being a lawyer. She'll have to go help people some other way. This is after fabricating a story to the um to the uh, widow of Howard. And yeah, right. Kino scene. Yeah, that was God. That was so hard to watch. <laughs> what do you mean? Way. I thought it in was great. Way. In a good way, it was hard to watch. Gaslighting a woman the- whose husband you basically killed. I mean, I think that's just that's why Kim is the greatest female character in television I, history. I, 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 I kind of feel like that scene was the breaking point. That was when she was just like. I'm definitely doing this, and I'm definitely going uh, through with it. However, I don't ever want to do shit like this again. So Yeah, she even gives know. Jimmy the kiss of death down in the parking yeah. garage, and yeah. that's it. We never yeah. see you know them together again. Wow, so that's, that's it, huh? You guys just accepting this. Uh, what, the- accepting what? Well, the bullshit that Kim tells Jimmy. Oh, yeah. Let's hear your analysis of it, Florian. <laughs> I all. All this, she just assumes, yeah, okay, I guess we, we can't be together. He doesn't even get a say in it or anything. That's uh, how relationships like, work. Usually you don't get to just pay and then they do whatever you want. Like, it's it's two individual <laughs> human beings, and if one of them wants to break up, it's not really like a, a mutual thing. Well, but she's the one who messed up by not telling him. And then she leaves him as well? Jesus. Yeah. Like, like what did he do wrong? Nothing. Yeah, I mean, nothing no more than usual, but... So we have it on record. You're saying Saul Goodman did nothing wrong? (laughs) Wow. I I think you're counterbalancing a lot of things that he does wrong on a regular basis against that. (laughs) What? What does that even mean? Saul is, generally speaking, a bad person. Whoa! What? (laughs) Erich, get out of here with that shit. (laughs) Imagine that. Do you guys have any uh, other thoughts about this whole breakup scene? Uh, the the actual breakup scene itself is so like heartbreaking. It's like six seasons worth of relationship building all culminate in this in this tragic breakup, right? And then the hard cut to who Saul becomes is just so hard hitting. It's honestly it's it's honestly peak fiction. <laughs> I love I love in any breakup scene when the other person is trying to like say like we'll fix this we'll like we'll figure it out like we'll, we'll we'll find a way to to get us through this you can't just give it up and then the other person just like no 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 uh, it was heartbreaking it's it's rough to watch I love Kim Kim fucking rules you yeah. love her after this yeah. <laughs> Like wow, even more so. I was I was thinking this would happen for the last like four years. So I mean, now that it finally did happen, it's it's great. Yeah, and I, I assumed it would happen, but I I don't know. It feels so unfair. Well, like how, how how did he deserve that part? Come on. I mean, I, I was heartbroken by like, and you got and, and you know, I I I being the uh, the um the black pill doomer cell that I am, if it affects me like that, actually makes me sad for the breakup and wanting them to stay together you know it's good right like yeah it's when you have a real breakup <laughs> they, they, they just leave you out of nowhere because of something they did wow that must really no you, you are really misinterpreting everything about this whole thing florian well, as usual specifically said that it was because of what she did so what do we no. think of uh, the scene between mike and papa oh man and Mike just gets it rubbed in his face that he's nothing more than a another one of those gangster types. He's not a noble man. I think like th- shows like this and shows like Breaking Bad are very interesting in the way that you personally watch these characters and root for them, even despite them doing all these terrible, evil things. 
But then every now and then you do need that outside source to say what what you are doing to people is monstrous. You can like excuse it. You can say that they're they're actually a good person. But no, they, they're they're very bad people. I mean, and Jim, I like getting that. Jimmy slash Saul has never been a evil person. He's like he's at worst he's a sleazy lawyer, and that's pretty much like as far as he goes, right? I think lawyers are the worst scum of the earth. What about landlords like Florian? <laughs> uh, wait, never mind. I take that back. They're the second worst scums of the earth. Uh, no, Florian is a is a land chad bullying his uh his um his leases, you know. Tenants, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's. It's really good to to hear it. Yeah. What 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 the what the, the what the daddy says, you know. What are you guys me. fucking talking about? Oh, wow. Sorry. <laughs> Should we talk about the Floyd, Gene episode? Floyd, were you talking about uh, Nacho's dad? Yeah. The daddy? <laughs> yeah, I was Why confused. Why would you call him the I daddy? I don't know what he's, what he's talking about. <laughs> Why oh, would you Jesus. call him that, man? Is that what's wrong with you? I said Jesus. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Before we go to the Gene episode, I wanted to say one more thing about uh, the hard cut to seeing Saul, like full on Saul. We've been waiting for what, eight years to see like Breaking Bad Saul Goodman and to see how he becomes that. And now that we're here, I want to go back. I want to go back to just good old Jimmy, slip in Jimmy. Yeah, I missed Jimmy pretty quick uh, during this little day in the life of Saul Goodman. I, uh, Suddenly, it was just like, oh, and a lot of people thought it was a, a boring way to do it. But I think the, the boringness perhaps is intentional. Like, this is just who Saul Goodman is now. He wakes up, immediately goes to work. Without even getting out of bed, he puts on his fucking Bluetooth and just starts having business phone calls all day. Yeah. And it's like, oh, yeah. my God. Like, th- there's no soul left inside this man yeah. anymore. It's genuinely, yeah. like, incredible how they took a character that was once just a comic relief character that existed solely to get our protagonists out of sticky situations to a genuinely, like, tragic character. A tragic. Yeah. That's movie. that's the ultimate, like, terrible thing is you realize that if Saul keeps talking, Jimmy never needs to feel, like, on the inside how his life has fucking destroyed him. Yeah, so Saul he just Goodman. keeps the fucking keeps the deals rolling, keeps the fucking uh, clients coming in, keeps people asking him for more. Like, well, that, that's, that's really how that's how Florian does uh, game programming. If he just keeps <laughs> focusing on the code, he won't have to deal with the guilt of what his ancestors did to those Jewish people. Nah, he can I just mean, keep so- making games. Yeah, it's that's all me. Good just, just complete workaholic. That's right. I <laughs> it never procrastinated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, no. Respectfully, you know, just just work. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this episode makes it really clear that Saul Goodman as a character is just a mask for the broken and hurt man that Jimmy McGill is. Mm-hmm. And it was super blackpilled because, uh, you know, everything that happened in the whole show was meaningless. But once a girl breaks up with you, uh oh, full on <laughs> sociopath. Remember, yeah. remember every episode of this show years ago, we used to ask, is he Saul yet? Like, that was always the thing that we asked each other as like, where is the show going? At what point will we hit the like marker of he is now Saul? It happened in the, this first episode we're going to talk about. And it was heartbreaking. Like, it was not this, like, oh, he's fine. Oh, it happened. We better call Saul. <laughs> yeah, it sucked. Yeah, instead this of instead so- of uh, Heisenberg saying this is not meth and exploding a, a drug dealer's <laughs> lab. <laughs> instead, it's just like, I'm breaking up with you. Smash uh-huh. cut to black. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. It's depressing. G- Jimmy actually goes MGTOW after uh, Kim breaks up with him. So base. I mean, basically <laughs> sleeping with, you know, hookers. That seems pretty mm-hmm. MGTOW to me. You gotta yeah, come somewhere. Hit yeah. on his secretary. Yeah, it's just all. Well, no, he he doesn't really hit on Francesca. He says, "Let me follow you home." You know, he's got to protect that booty. It's exactly. dangerous out there. It's actually noble. It's a noble. He's a hero. He takes care of his uh, employees. You know, and so he, Francesca, he does she does get. 
you know, if she's going to make a phone call pretending to be Hank's wife, you know, dying in the hospital, uh, she'll get a raise for it. So he does take care of his own. <laughs> uh, wow. I guess he's not going his own way. He's just going after her. Wow. Yeah, he's a hero. <laughs> uh, so the if we thought that the jump from Jimmy to Saul was jarring, uh, I think they outdid themselves with this episode 10 because we were all expecting, OK, this is the episode we're going to get Walt and Jesse and yeah. it's going to be the real Saul antics we've been waiting all show for. And then they just say, fuck you, actually, we're going to give you a full black and white Gene episode, which I've seen a lot of disappointment. I've seen it like split down the middle. Let me just be clear and fuck these other guys. I don't care about their opinion. As the the front run uh, ringleader of this show, I have to say it was Kino. Kino decision, Kino episode, one of the all time greats. It's a great episode. Missing Gene. Like, I missed at the beginning of a season getting that little flash of like 20, what, 20 minutes usually of just Gene living his life. And I think within the full like context of this show, now that we've fully transformed uh, Jimmy into Saul, seeing his further transformation into Gene for an entire episode is a great way to reset things and like kind of put us in the right headspace going into because he's he's kind of going back to his old ways here, isn't he? Oh, this was, it was the quintessential episode of Better Call Saul. He pulls out every single trick we've ever seen him do for this like yeah. one big, perhaps last hurrah scam. Like every single detail you can find references from all the other seasons, like when he when he uh, needs to distract somebody. So he'll, he'll pull like real sadness from his life, but he's just pretending yeah. to be sad. Like that's just yeah. one of his, the many tools in his arsenal. Uh, there's like a callback to Slippin' Jimmy, the funniest scene of the episode when, when the guy slips and falls. <laughs> like I, I fucking died laughing. It was so good. Yeah, me too. But what do you guys think of the new Jeff? New Jeff, what's your opinion? He's fine. I saw people talking about this. Yeah. I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> oh, was his character replaced? Wow. Yeah, yeah his character different actor. By a different actor. Yeah, but I don't even awesome. care. I thought the new guy was great. Yeah, I mean, same. when did we see him? Like two seasons ago? Like, I would know. Jesus. Yeah, you wouldn't remember after two years. Yeah, no. But, you know, it's it's a real tragedy, these delicious Cinnabons, but I'll, I'll never know what color they are now. How is this possible? They they look so great. Why, you, why you've never seen die? a Cinnabon before? Wait, they're real? I, I don't know. Do you have Cinnabons in Austria? <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> Holy fuck, no wonder. Dude, uh, first of all, Cinnabons are great. Second of all, after this episode, I really wanted a Cinnabon really bad. <laughs> like, like, half the episode is like Cinnabon glory Half shots. the episode is this big fat fuck <laughs> eating Cinnabons <laughs> with a fork and knife like it's a steak. And what? it looks so what? good. As a fat guy... As a fat guy myself, I'm always like critical of media that's just a fat guy eating food. <laughs> but this was great. <laughs> that guy stopped every fucking. Okay, okay. Here's my question. Here's my question. How often is he bringing them Cinnabons? Every is night. Every day. Every night. Every yeah. night? After every that shift. Night. They are eating a Cinnabon every fucking night. Just don't tell yeah. his wife. He is going to die in like a year. Yeah, oh, he's already going to be dead by 50, so... <laughs> you cannot eat that many Cinnabons and live. That's, well, but that possible. that goes back to Jimmy being willing to, like, ruin people's lives for his scam. <laughs> you know? Like, he ruined that old woman's life by sabotaging her with her friends. He's ruining this man's cholesterol. I mean, uh, that's, that's what his plan should have been. Not that he would distract him, but the man would have a heart attack. He would kill him? <laughs> the montage of Gene befriending these two security guards was genuinely Kino. It's yeah. so fun yeah. to watch. Yeah, it's well, like he... uh, a montage of an alpha male and a sigma male becoming friends. You know, it was really touching. <laughs> do, you yeah. think, do you think he, he knew any of that sports terminology? No. Or he just all no. picked it up? Yeah, no. it's pretty obvious. Yeah, I, I think in that first conversation, he's kind of just going along with it. He's then, doing what I end, do every single time somebody talks about sports with me. I like just say the most generic one word answer I can. <laughs> yeah. But it, it was also very funny when he's like reading through the magazines and the newspapers to study up on sports. <laughs> yeah. 
And then they managed to turn a scene of a fat guy eating a Cinnabon into like an actual tense scene as you're trying <laughs> yeah. to watch uh, yeah. Jeff pull off the heist. So good. Him like, him like screwing story. Jeff on like, this is what you grab in this order. You're saying this little ditty to yourself while you're doing it. And then he fucking slips. <laughs> And according to the Insider Podcast, uh, it did not take three minutes. It actually took the actor like 11 and a half minutes. And they did. Holy fuck. To get all this security camera footage, they did have to film him like doing the whole thing in sequence. Damn. How do you fit all that shit into a bag is my question. Uh, he, he I, like After the first five, coats. he went back to the crate. Yeah, sure. But like you had the three of those huge fucking coats, didn't they? I, I listened to the Insider Podcast and... um. I was shocked to learn that that um, that mall of the night shots weren't shot in the actual mall. It was a set. They shot the night set oh. in a really like. Imagine the effort that it took to recreate the mall in a set. That's Damn. insane. Pretty cool. That, that's yeah. probably pretty common, right? They surely do that a lot. Well, it, they were expecting that they would allow them to film in the mall during the night, but uh, they just said, no, you can't film here at night. So we were like, okay, we got to recreate the entire mall. Wow, that's insane. Yeah. Why didn't they let them film? What, how important can the mall possibly be? I don't know, man. It's crazy. Uh, I like how the, the writers really go out of their way with this episode to really, it's like a nice, tight, neat bow on everything. They even throw back in stuff from the other Gene scenes that I basically forgot about, like when he yells at the, the shoplifter to get a lawyer. And then yeah, when yeah. that security guard answers the door, I was like, oh shit, I didn't even realize. And then Jimmy is just so smooth, you know, mm -hmm. he's like, ah, oh, but I got a Cinnabon for you, you know, it's a free country. Yep. And oh, it's I, so good. I love seeing Gene, like, <laughs> genuinely, like, uh, happy and excited for the first time. Because after he pulled off the scheme successfully, he was really in a good mood. He was happy. He was looking at suits. I mean, it's really, like, last episode, we ended with uh, Jimmy at his lowest point. And this episode ended with Gene at his highest point. It's being awesome. Yeah. I think the, the show is so well constructed. I, I think, what is it, Carol Burnett is the old woman from the beginning? Yeah. Uh, yeah, who I I thought she was going to be playing Kim's mom. I never mm. would have guessed it was going to be Jeff's A mom. A random woman, Jeff's yeah, that mom, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I was not expecting this whole episode to be Gene. I was expecting, oh, I was expecting the uh, cold open to be Gene and then back to Saul. But they really pulled the fast one. They pulled the wool over my eyes. Honestly, I was expecting something like this, and it would probably be way more like uh, uh, nervy and tense. Something more like this by the end of the show. Like this would be like the penultimate episode. Uh, I thought that like we'd really get into like full Gene timeline stuff. I don't know what the fuck they're gonna do for the next three episodes. Well, yeah, let's read. let's get into the prediction corner and see if we can... Who will get the most accurate number of guesses for these final three episodes? And uh, maybe uh, we should all, you know, throw some questions out to the panel and uh, we can all answer Ooh. them. Uh, here's one that I have. Will we see Chuck in the final three episodes? Okay, okay. Do you mean the appearance of Michael McKean, the actor? Yeah, will we see just and any... any of Chuck at all. So I like think a flashback. picture, definitely a picture of Chuck. You think we will see a picture of him? You don't think that the, yeah. the HHM scene earlier this season might have been the last appearance of Chuck? Well, I think we'll see a picture of him in some way, Jimmy remembering him. So uh, not, not a flashback. Not a flashback, no. I think there will be a really long scene of Jimmy explaining to Walter and Jesse about how he once had a brother, and it's gonna be like a like five minute montage. And he's gonna say he was a good friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Well, I guess, I, I guess thinking of it, I, I guess he's probably gonna like. Yeah, maybe he's gonna get caught in the end, and then he's gonna think of 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 his brother and how he always tried to to pull him back to to what is good, but but he just wouldn't listen. You know, he just always had to. To be slipping to me. It could happen. <laughs> I 
Fuck that. I want the finale, the end of the final episode, flashback. We get like 20 minutes of Chuck and Jimmy doing karaoke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Hanger takes it all. That's right. It's a flashback and none of them are wearing younger makeup. None of them are. <laughs> no. like, it's Michael McKean currently looking supposedly. Well, have you guys seen younger. that that stupid meme uh, about like the fake ending of the show where he's in jail and he's like they start doing a big musical number to I fought the yes. law and the law won oh my and it, God. Like, it cuts to every character who ever appeared on the show to uh, sing part of it and there's like Jesus there's Christ. Lalo and uh, and, <laughs> and um uh, god damn it what's his name Howard? Yeah, yeah, Lalo and Howard are like dancing under the lab singing the song and just cuts to everybody. To yeah. Oh, it's got uh, Walt laying on the floor of the you know the meth lab where he dies and he's like his foot's tapping to the song as he's bleeding out. <laughs> That's how it should I'm trying end. to I'm trying to think about like how Breaking Bad ended. I guess Breaking Bad had flashbacks to the Gretchen and Elliot stuff in the last couple episodes, right? Flashbacks? Oh, they had a flashback to uh, to when um, they were friends in season one. Yeah. Oh, in season one. Yeah. I thought. I guess they maybe just talk about it in the. No. There's, yeah. There's yeah. not really any flashbacks in the, really? in the okay. Breaking Bad. I don't think there's. Well, yeah, I'm uh, trying to think if they ever do flashbacks like at the end of we, such a like important arc. I, I think all we get is Jesse having a daydream about woodworking. <laughs> no. In Breaking Bad season one, Walt has a flashback to of the creation of gray matter. Yeah, uh, right. Yeah, but we're talking about finales, hard C. Fuck. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you didn't, you said in Breaking Bad as in, like, the entire show. So. Uh, yeah, who wants yeah. to put out a, a prediction question for the panel? Um, hmm. What episode, well, there's only three left. That's what right. episode will Walt and Jesse show up in? The next one. Uh, Next yeah, it's one. gotta be the next one. I I really hope so, man. Absolutely insane if it was was saved for the finale. <laughs> and like that's no, the final shot is literally Walter just walking into the office and saying, mm -hmm. "No, fuck oh. you, fuck off." I want it to be legitimately. I don't want any more Saul scenes. I know they're gonna do it, but would it not be Kino if the final three were all continuing off of this Gene timeline? Because honestly, we can just watch Breaking Bad. We don't yeah. need to see this Saul shit. We fucking know. There, there's no hidden fucking yeah. story there. We know everything. Just give me three more Gene episodes. Three three episodes of Gene trying to find Kim and give her one last I, I, good fuck. I definitely oh, agree my. with that. Um, I don't need. I hope the Walt and Jesse thing was a lie to trick these fucking baboons in the audience into watching the show again. Ooh, I get to see the character I recognize. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. where the bald man? <laughs> we got a we got a Walt mention in this episode. <laughs> yeah, that was oh, Kino. Yeah. yeah, that was awesome. I actually kind of feel that, like, at the end of, of the previous episode, uh, he, he kind of opens his office, and I, I feel like that's the office right before before Walt and, and Jesse walk in. Is that is that wrong? It's not know. the same day, because he's wearing different clothes. Yeah. Oh, wow. And according to the tags on his car, it's a different year. I uh -huh. don't... I don't get why uh, Gene was so vague when talking about Walt, because isn't Walt like a... Like a infamous figure now like well yeah maybe it kind of goes without Walt. saying like like it's it's such a, a household name at this point he doesn't even need to say his name you know he can just make reference yeah. to it and they'll know yeah. you guys think Walt is like known around the country oh definitely he is yeah, for sure. yeah we know that from the the Jesse movie the El Camino oh, really? movie ah. He was like all over the news, like this is the greatest uh, drug kingpin in the history of the world. Wow. Okay. Is that what we heard? That wow. That's yeah. I feel like that was somewhere in the real show too. Oh well. Yeah. Uh, nobody else has any predictions they want to throw out. Like I, I think we can all agree Kim is gonna appear again. Yeah. It has yeah. to. It has to be. Yeah. Like I will be very disappointed if but, Kim does not show uh, up. I don't think we're gonna have a grand happy reunion because I don't, don't? see it. Oh yeah, that's that's a good one. Will it be a happy ending for Jim and Kim? I don't see a happy ending for Gene of uh, Jimmy Jimmy Gene Saul. I don't see a happy ending for him, honestly. 
Well, it probably makes sense because Genus is like almost reformed, so it would make sense for him to get a happy ending. Almost, Not reformed. almost reformed. What are you talking about? This episode he just proved he's exactly every, the same. Every thing he says is so. <laughs> is no, he, so he hasn't changed at all. <laughs> he walks away from from the crime. He he. He could have taken the money, but all he wanted is his peace. He, he didn't want to do any more crimes, you know? He had if he to didn't do want this. to, then he wouldn't have done this. Well, he already no. has money. He didn't do it for the money. Like, he had enough yeah. money to hire the the replacement man again, like the vacuum guy. So he clearly has a lot of money, and he has those diamonds. So he, he clearly did this scam because he wanted peace, but also just because it's fun and he was bored. Yeah, you can clearly wow. see that he's enjoying himself by pulling up the slip. This is the most fun he's had since Heisenberg died. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but he, it was for a slightly good cause because he's just trying to just to keep a low profile. Okay, I, I feel like this one is okay. Okay, this one's morally okay. Nobody got hurt. Like, I'll, I'll give you one. <laughs> Like he's he's really trying to to live a normal productive life. Okay, you didn't relapse. You just drank once. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. What do you guys think of the ending of the episode when he's looking at the flashy clothing and then he just puts it back on the uh, like he doesn't was, buy it? I was just about to say that. So he was looking at the suit, which like fancy, like flashy suits, like a Saul Goodman suit persona, right? And he was looking at the suit, considering buying it, but he put it down and walked away. And I think that's like him rejecting, uh, returning back to that life. Could that have been the finale episode? That's him deciding to to not go back to being Saul. Maybe you think we'll, we'll never see Jean again. Maybe that, think th- that's the prank. Bit. There are not three more episodes. It's just going to be nothing. <laughs> it's it's yeah, a bit too good. low key as a finale, but that that would definitely work as a good beat as the final thing you kind of see. Yeah. yeah, him rejecting going back. Well, yeah. I I'm hoping and praying that him and Kim get back together and we get some Jimmy Juniors popping out. Lickety split. I, I, so we can get a third spinoff. I, I want another cartoon about Jim and Kim and their <laughs> their three triplet sons who are getting into shenanigans. I want to see what Kim's reaction to the uh, Breaking Bad events where, like, what she was thinking when she was hearing Saul Goodman is the uh, yeah. warrior of, of Heisenberg. Probably thinks she dodged a massive bullet. Yeah. I don't know. Is, is Heisenberg any more scary than working for Lalo? Uh, like he already yeah. worked for Lalo. He already got shot up in the desert with seven million dollars in his pocket. Like that's pretty fucked up shit already. I don't think Heisenberg's that much more scary. Well, I think not- Heisenberg is definitely like the worst. I feel like he's probably the the worst person in the entire show, right? Well, he doesn't. Well, all of his crimes are committed for a reason. Like you know, like. Lalo is the type of person that would kill someone just because he happens to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah, or like Hector just killed Gus's gay boyfriend for no reason and made them all pissed. Yeah. And yep. Walt Started wouldn't have killed... Do you think Walt would have killed Gus's gay boyfriend no. ne- next to the pool? He wouldn't. No. Well, unless he's a drug addict, then he would have killed him with his meth, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. too good. Probably killed... Did a whole genocide with all his meth, you know? Okay, guys, you have any final predictions for the final three episodes? I want to see which of us can get the most correct. I so. A lot of people are saying that they think the most likely outcome for Gene is that he turns himself into prison, right? Um, I. A lot of people think that he will go back to Albuquerque for some reason because there is a promo that was released way before season six even came out showing Gene taking down like a wanted poster in Albuquerque, right? So like, I don't know if that's just for the promo or if it's hinting that for some reason he's returning to Albuquerque, but I would like to see him return to Albuquerque. Somehow Saul Goodman has returned. Well, um, I think I think the the whole gang is gonna get together. The whole well, Jesse, Walt, and and Saul, and they're gonna play laser tag. Okay, that's gonna be <laughs> the finale. That'd be a All Kino right. scene. That'd be Hell yeah. He, he's he's tried to get them into laser tag this whole time, but finally, finally, he's done it. Okay. That was the right. true most despicable act of Walter White turning down his offer to buy a laser tag. 
Yeah, what, what a shame. Such a cruel man. Yeah. I think I think he's going to go find Jesse in Alaska or wherever the fuck he went. He's going to say, Jesse, I'm putting together a crew. And then he looks over and the force ghost of Walt and uh, uh, Hank and Gus <laughs> is there. And they're going to go on a heist together. Hey, Rich, I'm not going to lie. I... I, I don't think that's going to happen, actually. <laughs> what, the fuck? what the fuck you asked me? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think your prediction is just not very good, honestly. I don't think it really fits the tone oh, of the show. You. It's totally yeah, going to happen. <laughs> huh. how, how could you make such a ridiculous prediction, man? It's crazy. Yeah, I think we should vote Erich off the show. He's not taking this fuck. seriously at all. He thinks there's going to be a ghost. There hasn't been a ghost <laughs> since James no, Ghost I told her dad to crash those planes. Jane, James Ghost be told her dad ghost. to crash those planes. Rich. <laughs> I said there was going to be three ghosts, you fuck. Uh, yeah, not one ghost. That would be yeah. preposterous. There has to be three. Just uh, like uh, 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 Charles Dickens. Yep. Sure. <laughs> and probably some Shakespeare play has three ghosts in it. Who okay, knows? Yeah, probably. For, sure. <laughs> for Better Call Kino, I've been Florian Himsel. I'm the Mumpkin Jones. I'm Heartsey. And I'm Flynn. What the fuck? <laughs> Nobody's me. <laughs>